Welcome to the Careers in Finance series on FinPod by CFI, where we sit down with finance professionals to explore their career journeys. Join us for ideas, insights, and inspiration to help you advance your career in finance. Hi, my name is Scott Powell. I'm a co-founder and the chief content officer here at Corporate Finance Institute. And I'm delighted to have my colleague, Asim Khan, with me. And I'm, we are both super excited to be talking to Danielle Stein Fairhurst. Danielle is an expert financial modeler. She is an author of two books around Excel and financial modeling. She's a Microsoft MVP, and she also is a corporate trainer. And Danielle, we are delighted that you have joined us today. Thanks for having me. So what I thought we'd do is just start uh, by what got you passionate at the start of your career around financial modeling? Yeah, well, way back when I first started, I think it wasn't quite as well known as a particular pursuit. And I kind of found myself doing it because I really enjoy finance and the use of Excel was something that came very naturally to me. And I absolutely love the concept of using Excel to to solve different problems. Uh, and, uh, and that's pretty much all I've ever done is use Excel in a financial context for uh, lots of different organizations and clients. And uh, just for our listeners and learners, can you describe what you, how you would describe the skill of financial modeling? Yeah, yeah. Well, typically a financial modeler is is good at Excel, but they also understand how a business and the financials hang together. And, uh, you know, the skill of financial modeling is being able to uh, take uh, the business and, uh, and, and put it into a, a model or a construct, usually in Excel, so that you can kind of see all the moving pieces. And usually it contains a, a P&L or an income statement, a cash flow and a balance sheet. But sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it might just be, let's say, if you uh, usually you have a problem that you want to solve. So, for example, you might want be wanting to make a decision around a product. You know, should I expand into into a new region? And the financial model will help you solve that problem. So you'd put in the inputs and then it will give you the outputs. And of course, the wonderful thing about financial modeling is that if you change the inputs, the outputs will change. Uh, and if you build the model in a well-structured way, that works beautifully. Thanks, Danielle. And if thinking about the f financial modeling skills you've seen in others or people or maybe mm -hmm. people you've trained, where are the biggest skills gaps or what are the biggest mistakes a lot of financial modelers make? Gosh, so many. Uh, yeah. uh, I think, oh gosh. Um, so probably, um, I think uh, when people get really good at Excel, uh, they try and show off about all the, you know, this, I can build a formula that's, that's this long, which isn't clever. Uh, and I think just keeping it simple and solving a problem logically using Excel um, rather than trying to cram as much as possible into a single row. Uh, that's one uh, mistake I often see. And of course, uh, it's very easy to make mistakes. You, you know, it's probably, you know, there's some many quoted uh, statistics around how many mistakes there are, the percentage of financial models that contain errors. And as a modeler, your job is, as you're building it, is trying to reduce the possibility for errors error as much as you can. And a lot of the things I, that I teach in, in best practice are about reducing the possibility for error uh, and, you know, putting things like error checks in and sort of check sense checking as you go uh, to make sure that that doesn't happen. So I'm interested in what drew you to writing. You've written two books mm. on financial modeling yeah. itself. What drew you to that? Yeah, well, I guess it's one of those things you have this, um, you know, I, uh, writing a book just uh, seems like a wonderful achievement. And I was uh, first approached by Wiley Finance uh, back in um, gosh, it was quite, a, quite a while ago. And uh, I had a lot of training materials already and I would write a lot of instructional 
text. So I had I had a lot there already, uh, and uh, and just to put it together as a as a kind of instructional guide, uh, and and I would use it as part of my training. Uh, the thing though about writing a book in Excel, of course, is that Excel changes and the screenshots, you know, are using the first book was using, I think, Excel Mm. 2010. That was quite, quite a while ago. And then we had to update it with the new functionality of Excel. So we've actually written that one three times. And I've also written uh, financial modeling in Excel for dummies. uh, And that has been released twice now and that one's um, uh, still uh, still relevant in terms of the, the the version of Excel that people are using and what is uh, applicable for financial modeling. But what an impact you're having, given creating those books, allowing others to really understand best practices as it relates to financial modeling. So and I'm really curious, congratulations, by the way, on being a Microsoft MVP. Can you tell us a Thank bit of you. the story behind that? And what does yeah. that entail? It's um, just an award or recognition by Microsoft that, uh, you know, that we are are out there and sharing the love of Excel. Uh, it's for people who are passionate about using Excel, as, as am I, and people who are sharing the new tools and features and, and how to apply them in your work. Uh, and so as an MVP, you know, there's a lot of responsibilities that you have to share, things that we get to go to um, to you, you know to actually talk to the Microsoft team to go to their annual summit in Seattle uh, and uh, and you know lots of other opportunities so it's a it's a, and it's a great we we do a lot of community work I run a lot of meetups uh, one of the things that I find a uh, little disturbing about the world of financial modeling is the lack of female p- participation and I run a women in financial modeling meetup group uh, to try to encourage women to uh, to get involved to compete in the championships so there's financial modeling World Cup Excel eSports all of that stuff uh, I commentate sometimes for uh, the Excel eSports online battles which are streamed on uh, ESPN or and, and on YouTube uh, I'm attending their finals in Las Vegas at the end of this year so I get really excited about any opportunity to share Excel and financial modeling with uh, with the community and especially if uh, if it can help more women get involved uh, in the profession. How, how does, uh, if I may ask a question, how does Microsoft find somebody, identify potential MVPs? Uh, it is a nomination process. So, yeah, you just get, get nominated by, by another MVP, I suppose. Yeah. So, Danielle, I don't know if you can answer this, but I'm just curious, given that you're commentating and you're seeing really amazing people compete as financial modelers, is there anything, any story you remember of just someone doing something exceptionally well? At one of these competitions? Sometimes I'm amazed uh, at some of them. Uh, Diermud Early, I don't know if you, he actually recently became a, a Microsoft MVP just because of his, he shares a lot of his, uh, so he'll often live stream his uh, competition and watching what he does, you know, just the speed with which he can create or to solve a problem. You know, you have two in, in the Financial Modeling World Cup, you have two hours and just being able to very, very quickly solve a problem and get right through to the end is is absolutely amazing and and when commentating you the, the role of a commentator is to try to explain what's going on on the screen and it's like wow there's a shortcut I <laughs> you know haven't haven't seen before or you know some of the, the 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 way and the layout and the way that they go about solving these problems is absolutely mind-blowing and uh, yeah it's really interesting Wow, that sounds exciting. Speaking of being wowed by shortcuts, I think all of us know there's way too many shortcuts. And even I recently was shown a shortcut that blew me away. Most of our learners and listeners will be will be lovers of Excel. I'm, I'm going to put you on the spot. Do you have a few Excel shortcuts that either you use all the time or that people don't really know that they could be using? 
Yeah, uh, I guess when I train, I do a lot of training online, I tend to sort of vocalize the shortcuts that I use, you know, the ones that, you know, and everybody's got their favorites, um, probably, you know, alt equals is probably, I'm sure everybody knows that one. Uh, but, you know, just being able to quickly put in a, a sum, uh, you know, that's one that I just use uh, absolutely constantly, uh, you know, just being able to navigate really quickly. I think they, you know, control shift right or control shift down, you know, control A, you know, those sorts of things where you're able to very quickly, you, it's just going to be a lot quicker than using the mouse. So talk us through what's a day in the life of Danielle Stein Fairhurst now? Like, what does that entail? Yeah, I mean, I'm probably not uh, a typical financial modeler. Uh, there's, you know, I think financial modeling is a skill that people have as part of their career and they might have it as their sort of job and it'll be one part of their job. I'm a, uh, a pure financial modeler. So financial modeling is, is all I do. I sort of split it into two parts. I have consulting where I actually go into organizations and build financial models for them. Um, or I talk about financial modeling and I I have just hit stop record on a brand new LinkedIn learning course. Uh, and so that's what's been keeping me busy wow. over the last couple of weeks. Yeah, I've got a uh, finance functions in depth one already that is uh, has been out for over a year now. And I'm just uh, just finished recording one, which is uh, a new are you able to tell us what the title is? Yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah. I was gonna. I was thinking. I haven't actually announced it yet, but it's it's finance presentations. Yeah, it's about taking like the best way of visualizing the output of your finance, like your financial models, your ratios, whatever you want to present, and then how to get it into from Excel into PowerPoint. So like more of a presentation. It's a little bit different uh, to what I've done in the past. So that's been keeping me busy the last couple of weeks. Today it's very early in the morning here in Sydney, and I'm just about to spend uh, the day with a client in Sydney uh, who uh, I'm doing uh, a lot of data analysis for them, uh, dealing with large quantities of data, which is not uh, not uh, not unusual for me to work with that kind of um, that kind of client. Today will be lots. I'm pretty sure today is going to be lots and lots of power query. <laughs> Just, uh, yeah, which is very of, uh, useful. The data model. Yeah. Yes, yes. So not not pure sort of financial modeling as such. Lots of data analysis today, I think. But yeah, I go. I have a lot of different clients. I go into different organizations and help them uh, build models. And then the rest of my time is training. I am actually going to Fiji on Monday uh, to run a, a budgeting. I think it's the budgeting and forecasting uh, course uh, wow. next week for some locals there. So. Well, that's fantastic. Two different things. Uh, no week is the same, uh, and uh, and I absolutely love it. It's uh, really really varied, but always around uh, those core skills of Excel and financial modeling, which I think are absolutely fantastic skills to have for anyone. It's lovely, Wonderful. lovely to hear your passion for Excel and financial modeling, and that you built a career around it, mm, which is absolutely yeah. Given much you. Given what a leader you are in financial modeling, what do you what do you think is going to happen going forward? Do you see any changes as we go forward with things like possibly AI and financial modeling? Where do you think we're headed? Yeah, yeah. It's really interesting. You know, Microsoft is working really hard at keeping relevant, making sure that that uh, that Excel is is staying relevant, uh, particularly for financial modelers. Uh, you know, things like dynamic arrays. Are, uh, you know, makes things easier uh, for users. There are, I can see there's a, a few gaps, you know, they can, there are a few things when you try to build a full financial model using only dynamic arrays. Uh, it can be quite difficult to do some of the things that would be quite basic in ordinary Excel. So I think there's a little way to go, uh, you know, getting lambdas, so b using lambda solutions, uh, getting them to become more mainstream because they are quite scary uh, still for most people. I mean, heck, they're scary for me. So, um, yeah, I don't know if you guys ever use uh, lambdas, you know, getting <laughs> to, to solve. Uh, amazing, amazing what you can do. And in the competitions, a lot of people use lambdas. They have them um, to solve particular problems that are quite difficult to or, or, or quite long-winded to 
to build in Excel and you can build a lambda like a like a little reusable formula um, in Excel. So I think uh, Microsoft is really behind that uh, in terms of AI. I am waiting for the day that I find that a, that AI can build a financial model for you, but I think that's just a little way off mm. still. So I think our jobs are safe for now. <laughs> For now. For now, yeah. So, Asma, do you have, I have one more big question, and it's getting you to think about someone maybe in their early 20s. They're just on the start of their Excel and financial modeling journey. What advice would you give that the, those folks? Yeah, yeah. I think uh, the technical skills are really important, and I think we expect, the, the employees expect that from young people. Uh, and uh, just staying on top of your game in terms of uh, making sure you know what's out there, you know what's what's available, you know, staying on the cutting edge of, uh, you know, making sure that you can use uh, all of the tools from from Microsoft as well as, you know, whatever, what, whatever else is out there. Um, you don't necessarily have to, I know it can be quite daunting because, you know, like there's Python in Excel now, there's, there's just so, and that's just a huge topic, you know, power platform, uh, you know, all of that stuff is absolutely huge. And I don't think you need to be an expert, but you do need to know what it does. You need to be able to assess this is a situation that needs Power BI or we should be using formulas instead or, you know, and just knowing what is the best solution uh, for different problems. If you're uh, in, on, on the job market, to be able to have that conversation during an interview, to be able to talk intelligently about these different uh, technologies and I think, uh, you know, from a technical perspective, but also to sort of understand overall the business and how a financial model kind of uh, looks at the entire business. I think uh, having uh, that sort of appreciation of financial modeling can be helpful as well. What a great piece of advice. It's, it is interesting how many tools there are out there and there's many ways now to solve the same problem. So I thank you, Dan. Absolutely. Yeah, thank mm -hmm. you so much. Well, this, I think our, our, I think our time is almost up. So I think on behalf of us and myself, Danielle, thank you so much for spending a bit of time with us and sharing your advice, your, uh, and your journey in financial modeling with us and our listeners. So thank you again. Thank you. Thanks thank you. for having me. Thanks for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed the conversation. FinPod is brought to you by Corporate Finance Institute, the number one rated online provider of finance and banking training, certifications, and productivity tools.